Alright, so in the world of PC fans, we have the standard 3-pin kind, also known as DC Power fans, and we have the more advanced 4-pin fans, or Pulse Width Modulation fans, PWM for short. Each of these kinds of fans come in the airflow optimized and static pressure optimized varieties, but does using one over the other actually affect performance? Find out on today's episode of East Coast Tech. What's going on guys? Andrew here with another episode of East Coast Tech. And here I have two sets of 120 millimeter static pressure fans from Corsair. One of them is the white LED variant, but that should be negligible in our testing as the fan designs are near identical. The four pin PWM fans came with my H100i AIO liquid cooler and the three pin DC ones I bought separately to spice up my case. So I'm not going to test how well these fans perform under load because I imagine they're going to work about the same at 100% CPU, CPU usage. Instead, I'm going to test how well they perform under idle and under a typical gaming load. I'll also be testing acoustics to determine if either fan type yields quieter results while under identical load conditions. To further standardize our testing, I'll run the fans in a push configuration and I'll be using the fan headers on my motherboard instead of the fan cables on the H100i. Beginning with the 3 pin fans, we'll first configure and optimize the fan curves in the BIOS. My ROG HERO 9 motherboard will test each fan and automatically fine tune a curve based on the fans that are plugged in. After a minute or two of calibration, our curve is set and we're ready to boot the machine. I'd like to note here that I'm currently running an Intel Core i7 7700K overclocked to 4.8 GHz and 32GB of Trident Z RGB memory clocked to 3000 MHz on an ASUS ROG Maximus HERO 9 motherboard. Okay, now that we're booted into Windows, let's let it sit at idle for about 15 minutes to stabilize and I'll be back to check the results. And I'm back! So currently we're in and about 34 degrees Celsius. Next, I'm going to game for 15 minutes and check our temps again. Okay, so under a gaming load, we get an average of about 52 degrees C. Now it's time to compare our results with the 4-pin PWM fans. But we'll let my computer rest for about an hour or so so we can test with a cold start like in our first test. Like before, we'll have the motherboard set up a personalized fan curve for us keeping the existing, the existing CPU overclock and XMP memory profile, and then boot into Windows. Now, as in our previous test, we'll let it stabilize its idle temp for about 15 minutes, and then record our results. And this time, we're around 34 degrees Celsius. A result that's not much different than our previous one. In fact, not different at all. Let's see if we can get a different result while gaming. I'll fire up a game again for 15 minutes and see. Okay, so now we can see a difference. Our temps this time around top out at about 55 with an average of I'd say about 48 degrees Celsius. Now, this might not seem like much, but it does appear that the four pin PWM fans have the upper hand at this point. Next, I'll test the acoustics of the PC at idle and with the applied gaming load for both sets of fans, taking note that I'll be leaving the side panel on for all testing and the position of my mic will not be changed as well. So here's how the PC sounds under idle for the set of three pin fans. And here's how it sounds under idle for the four pin fans. Now here's how the three pin fans sound under a gaming load. and for the 4-pin fans. Alright, so it's again no doubt that there's a clear winner here folks. The PWM 4-pin fans definitely sit a tier above their 3-pin DC counterparts, with better idle temps, slightly better typical low temps, and with much better acoustics. So why is that? The blades designs are near identical, and I mean, fans just spin. 
Could there actually be that much difference in their power delivery to merit such a difference in acoustics and overall performance? Well, yes. 3-pin fans use DC voltage to increase or decrease their speed. Changing the voltage in this manner, however, causes a coarser and sometimes incoherent or overcompensated changes in speed. This issue is mitigated with 4-pin fans as the 4th pin or wire receives pulses that allow the regulation of DC voltage to be more fine-tuned, which in turn allows the span to speed up or speed down more easily than with a 3-pin fan. Keeping components cool, and the various degrees of control make them ideal for CPU cooling heat sinks and radiators. So should I throw out all of my 3-pin fans, go out and buy all new fancy PWM fans? Well, no. The fan you already have is going to be better than the one you have to buy. For case cooling especially, 3-pin fans are fine, as the course regulation of speed isn't going to be as important for the overall case temperatures. Where you should invest in PW fans is for your CPU hit sinks, radiators, and when you need to build the quietest system possible. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video hit that like button, dislike it if you hated it. I've got links for the products I've talked about in this video in the video's description, right underneath that like button. They are tied to my Amazon account, so if you happen to purchase any, it does give me a small kickback, which is greatly appreciated, and it helps me make videos like these. Again, this was Andrew with East Coast Tech, and I'll see you next time.